Thank you. Well, yes, g'day. Welcome to Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco and the Duckworth Lewis system. Uh, this is season eight, episode three. Hope you're playing along at home. I hope you're enjoying every episode. What we This episode will go down and be known as How Good Is Joe Root episode. I think we'll just oh, name it that. Mm, plenty of rooting in this one, I think is a good way to say it. England, mighty England have done it again. They've asserted their dominance over Sri Lanka, defeating the tourists by 190 runs on day four in front of, well, no one. The golden <laughs> child, Randy Joe, went and got a ton in each innings, but still didn't get player of the match. Unbelievable. Why? Because Gus Atkinson, oh. after only five tests, is proving he's one of the greatest cricketers in the world. He went on to get a ton and a five fight, getting his name on the board at Lords for the fifth time. In one year. The third <laughs> test starts this Friday, so we, we will have all the ins and outs for you here on the pod. Also, as we speak, the mighty Bangladeshis are knocking on the door of another historic victory against the curators of crisis cricket, Pakistan. They need just... 95 runs with eight wickets remaining. We rehearsed that. <laughs> um, to make it a glorious two wins from two starts, giving Dizzy Gillespie one hell of a coaching Headache. We will get Adam Gilchrist to text him and see how he's going. <laughs> during, <laughs> during he, 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 might, he might be going. <laughs> <laughs> he might join us live as he's leaving. Um, all right, lots of cricket to talk about. So let's bring in our living legends, Englishman Michael Vaughan and Australian Adam Gilchrist. Gents, uh, who went first last week? I think it was Vaughan Gilly. How are you? Yeah, really good, really good. Great, great to uh, be joining you, chaps. Uh, wow, I hadn't got the latest score there. Oh, Dizwa, big fella. I mean, I'm sure he'll come up in conversation at some point. But, um, yeah, Test Cricket, where's it at? And do we need to continue this podcast right now, given that you've just announced it as how rootable this podcast is going to be? Uh, we've just lost all our Indian listeners and viewers um we need something from you Vaughnie, to to claw them back yeah 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 morning evening afternoon wherever you are yeah I, i'll claw them back don't worry yeah Gilly. i've got a few numbers to just uh, read out throughout the show which they'll no doubt enjoy just just on the pakistan bangladesh series i mean dizzy will be nervous that you know, obviously need 95 bangladesh but pakistan made 274 and bangladesh were 20 for six <laughs> 20 for six. Yeah. <laughs> now, now Pakistan have lost some games, but if they lose this one, wow, um, Bangladesh, full credit. Yeah, just just in the UK, obviously, it's been another tremendous week. Um, England team dominating uh, on their on their journey uh, to becoming the number one Test team in the world. So it's uh, it's been a good week. Now, um, our erstwhile producer. Ollie on that, on that, on that, I'll just... Uh... Oh. <laughs> oh. Holy jeez. Nice. Wearing a box. Sorry, lads. Hang on a minute. Hang on. I've got to describe this. Hang on. Sorry, Vaughnie, you for those that are only listening, you've just stood up and grabbed... Well, it doesn't matter what you grabbed. You grab a book that's called Bazball, so that you might as well put that back. But what... Are you wearing any pants? No, I've got pants on. It's early. It's English pants, trousers. Yeah, we. Our, no, I've got his pants. Yeah. No trousers. No, no. I'm going. I'm just... going for the Mark Mark Bosnich. Bosie, when he used to read the news or was on the show in Australia, he used to, to have a desk, didn't he? And a, a book top. He had a shirt and a tie, and underneath he had very little. So I've gone for the Bosie. Jesus, I like it. Oh. I do too. I do too. Yeah. And thanks for showing us your baz balls. Boy, yeah. it's a great start. <laughs> if you're listening, go That's on YouTube. Your... If you've always wanted to see Michael Vaughan in his undies, this is your chance. <laughs> without doubt, I think you said it, uh, Ollie. Without doubt, still wearing his box from his... <laughs> the CPF undies coming <laughs> soon. Take that out after the end of your career, thought, mate. I thought I'd bring the book back in to show you just to realize baz balls back. It's back. The book's yeah. back. The team are back and get ready, lads. They are now. But, are, but, but just asterisks there. Uh, we need, we, Prof, I know you're about to launch into something. I don't want to steal your momentum, but asterisks. Just remember, as soon as, if we have to touch on that series again, there's an asterisk. <laughs> Gilly, I think we have to touch Why? on the England Sri Lanka series. I think we have to. But I'm, I'm going to bring Ollie in. 
Okay. So Ollie's turned to shine at the top of the pod. He tells us who's giving us money if we're going to exist for another week. So it's NordVPN, everyone. <laughs> it's NordVPN for a third one in a row. NordVPN.com forward slash CPF for the discount, the four months free in the 30-day money-back guarantee. They're loving what we're doing, saying what we're watching each week. Um, oh. Prof's weird sports. This week, I am, you know, I've got a confession. That I, I like rugby as well. It's a second sport. And South Africa played the All Blacks, which is one of the great Ooh, games. Yes. But I watched it. Super sport in Kosa, the language there, because it's just the greatest commentary in the... I don't understand, understand part of some of the names, but the energy level and the, is phenomenal. Mm. So that's what I fired up my NordVPN for. Gilly, you've just sent something through yes, as well. Did. Absolutely, NordVPN. What's the promo? NordVPN.com forward slash CPF. CPF, yeah. of course, that's us. Yeah, that's uh, us. The European Create League, purely <laughs> the gift that keeps on giving. You know? <laughs> And anyone that's familiar with it, they've probably already seen this because you would follow them uh, or you'd follow Cluj or the Horny Brook or someone like that, the Horny Church, of course. Um, that catch, I sent it around, boys. That's one of the more extraordinary feats in the game of cricket, one of the most casual efforts, the little chip to mid on. I haven't even been able to make out who the teams are, who the player is, but it's just a little uh, a one-two step, just stick the left foot out and catch it in the right hand. Brilliant. It's, Are you uh, looking at it now, Vaughny? Because I'm just logging on now. So yeah. you'll get my live. It is stunning. Yeah. Oh, it's there you go. It flicks it off the right boot. <laughs> there we go. The boot. Yeah, it's a great the, touch. Oh, that's <laughs> outstanding. And matched only, as it, it is the oh. only league that is always matched. The action's always matched by the commentary. The yeah. blokes are losing their shit again. The same best catch in the history of the game. So, very uh, good. Nah, beautiful. And then he yeah. just hobbled back to his position. Which roller would they have used on that pitch, Gilly? Is that the heavy roller? Or? <laughs> the Bay yeah. City rollers, I reckon, mate. That's what it would have been. But uh, nah, that's uh, oh, yeah, a that's nice turf. That's, that's beautiful. Yeah. Very, very good. Oh, well, hang on a second. A second. Well, this could be one of the best catches you'll ever see. <laughs> yes, there's no way. Surely not. He's done it. Oh, my goodness. Goodness, there's no way. Gilly, correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Did yeah. not back in the day, I might be remembering the wrong cricketer, did not Tubby Taylor or well, someone? He, yeah, first he, um, slip? He, he accepted a catch at, at first slip. He might have been off the bowling of Michael Bevan, actually, big wrong. And uh, he sort of took it, at, tried to take it about head high, but it sort of pushed him backwards. He fell backwards. The ball went off his hands, clipped his white floppy hat on the way up, which is still out. The hat hasn't fallen off. He hasn't used that to help catch or intercept. But then as he's falling back, the ball's about to hit the ground and his right foot kicks it accidentally, I think, straight up in the air and it lands back in his uh, back in his hand. So, mm-hmm. yeah, Tubby, not quite as graceful as old mate in the European. And, yeah, let's face it, they're Europeans. They're going to look a lot cooler than the big buffalo, big Tubby Taylor. <laughs> This is true. Now, Vaughny, what have you been watching on NordVPN? Yeah, uh, no sport uh, on NordVPN for oh. me this uh, week. I- I- I've been lo- logging into the uh, American version of Love Island. Oh, yeah. You do love uh, Love Yeah, Island. honestly, just, yeah. just go into it. It's absolutely magnificent. It all, it all around off. in your undies. <laughs> yeah, in, in my grundies. Um, yeah, it's well worth a look. Just get on NordVPN and put American Love Island. Just just, just Google it, have a look, and just, just respond to me. <laughs> okay. With oh, with your right. when you when you see it first and you see just watch for two minutes. Just give me one word answer. Okay. <laughs> That's a good tease for next yeah, week. Absolutely, we'll get on. Don't worry week. about that. Uh, and I've been watching some froth. So the frisbee golf, oh, uh, big yeah. tournament. Froth. Froth. Mm. Yeah. So it's a it's a buck. It's a the hole is like a large caged basket. Yeah. Yeah. Like, this. yeah it's, it's basically you tee off from the tee box and you throw it as far as you can, and it's then not you're easy to into get, the wind. No. no, no, no. There's a one of the great videos. Philo Simbrine or something did the first ever albatross on YouTube. If you Google Frisbee golf Philo, you've never seen anything. Reverse angle. Wow. It bends both ways. Reverse swing. Incredible. Got, yeah. Got a I have a feeling it's going to be bigger than the PGA Tour. <laughs> I think. Wow. Fr- yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's going to take on the Take him down. Yeah. Yeah. Live oh. Rolf. <laughs> I'm going to check that out, Rolf. Hey, just quickly backtracking to Vaughn's topic of uh, chosen viewership. Um, 
Ollie, do we need to get any update on your situation, or yeah, are you? Very good question. Uh, yeah, um, right. yeah. Thanks for asking, guys. Um, no, no, nothing to really report. We're doing the long distance thing for about three months now. Um, Where uh, is she now? Where is she now? Oh, still, question. still in, still in um, Sri Lanka. Still been there for three months. Right. Yeah, just yes. um, uh, working in politics over there. That's all I can say. Um, especially with the uh, yeah Sh- Sri Lankan series going on, but um, yeah, well, you I suggest you get down to the Sri Lankan Cricket Association. She might be able to take over there and get some sort mm-hmm. of order. Well, well exactly. she actually did offer a segment where cause opposite the hotel she's staying is the is the biggest cricket shop in Colombo. She wondered if she just showed products or put some of the uh, the hats we have left and see if they can mm-hmm. sell some of them because we still got some originals uh, as you can see from the cheap seats. So she off has offered. We need a segment from Colombo Cricket Store. Uh, and Ollie, in the event that one day she exists, we will cross to her. <laughs> I promise you. We haven't even given her a name in this episode. It's just she. The story is getting more and more elaborate, well, mate. It's um, a very good story. This is this this is true, but Ollie, she, she is a hu- Ollie, she is a human, yeah. <laughs> she she's she is a human um and actually like AI um, this, or anything this, like that. <laughs> this is a really good uh sort of segue because we're also mentioning Don't discord blow her we've got up, a few... Ollie, <laughs> no we've got a few questions on discord this week to do and the top comment this week before his question was just isn't Ollie quite handsome? So I sent it to Maddie saying you've got some competition. Now, I don't know who that user is or anything, but on Discord, the comment trending on CPF channel right now is, is Ollie handsome, which is yeah. the first time that's yeah. ever happened. But yeah. I think that'll be a bot. I yeah, I was going to say, that's definitely a bot. <laughs> yeah, but we've got some questions for the fans on there as well. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, this is a cricket podcast. I have to remind you guys every week. England. Just, by the way, just on bots, there was bots getting involved with the Oasis tickets over here. It was causing oh. chaos. Oh. But you're going. Update. You're managed in. to sneak, managed to sneak a few. Yeah, I'm in amongst them in Heaton Park next July. Ooh, there'll be all sorts flying over my head and on my head, no doubt. Is that a year away? These concerts that have just been promoted? yeah next July sold out. Oh mate, so, they'll have blown up each other again before then. Yeah, no, you yeah, want to see the. To be fair, people were saying when they were waiting in the queue to get the tickets that they probably have uh, split by the time they've got the tickets. <laughs> so my father-in-law was trying to get uh, Edinburgh tickets, and he sent me a photo at. You could log on. Was it nine o'clock or something, Vaughny? Mm. At nine o one, he was in the queue, and there was one hundred and seventy thousand people mm. yeah. in Scotland in front of him. Nice. Seven, At- seven million were logging mm. on from nine o'clock till half ten on that morning, whatever the morning was. That's I'll speak weird. to him. See if we can do a live show on the back of it. Is that all right? Yeah. 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 Are they open for us? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big, big, big Indian series around the same time, so I think it'll yeah. be uh, hot news. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I think you're right. Uh, okay, let's get to the cricket, gents. England, as I mentioned, have won mm. the second test and secured the series. Gilly, do not walk away. Stay. No. <laughs> Gilly. Okay, we've lost Adam Gilchrist. Um, they won by 190 runs. Not a big surprise. Vaughan, uh, I think we have to talk about uh, Joe Root. All right. In with... He's back. Right on. Right on. <laughs> uh, century in each innings, mate. 143. 103. The second, well, century, like genuine Baz ball, came off 111 balls. He's far, uh, fastest ever that he's scored, fastest that, ton. That's correct. And that's, 111 and, balls. Yeah. And he's only. Claiming I mean, that as Baz ball, are we? Yeah. For Joe Root. Joe yeah, Root, yeah. Joe Root, yeah. And, um, <laughs> and who was the last person to get 100 in both innings at Lords? Well, it mm. wasn't Michael Vaughan, was it? <laughs> oh, was it? Yes, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, that was, that, really? yeah, that was me. Double up there, Skipper. Yeah, that was me. Just doubled up. Who's that against? Oh. Yeah, just, just doubled up. You well, know, your name's Lara, been mentioned. Uh, Brian Lara and Co. Yeah. Oh, really? You've been mentioned a few times, Bonnie, because the... I think he was bowling. <laughs> yeah, that's the same. <laughs> <laughs> Seven test centuries at Lords. <sighs> also, now for Joe Root. And the two people he went past that both had six were Graham Gooch and Michael Vaughan. Mm. Uh, you've been, you've been your name around a lot. Yeah, There's also... he's, he's not had a squirrel, so he, he can't be classed as legendary because he's not had one stuck on his head. Yeah, Joe? Joe's not, no. No, no. That's no, right. so that, that counts against him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you think one day he might need a squirrel? Have you checked his he's quite hairline? Thick. No, he's quite thick. I think he'll be all right up top. There's one or two. There's one or two that won't be around the England side, but uh, Joe's not bad. 
<laughs> do you do you talk to them pretty early on? Do you let them know that? Right, try to a- give them an indication, just an indication that uh, things are not quite right up top, and maybe they'll need a a little bit of uh, you know substance, should we say, <laughs> to help. Turkish delight, yeah. Mm, just just substance. Yeah. Hang on, um, what are we talking about there? Uh, on his head or top order? <laughs> <laughs> or the England captain? Oh, oh yes. Well, yeah. this is the other spot where Vaughny's name keeps coming up. <laughs> um, a very interesting article in The Telegraph written by you, Michael Vaughan, yes. about Ollie Pope and that perhaps he makes a better vice captain. Would you like to elaborate on the podcast about your thoughts? Well, my, my elaboration is um, I think in cricket we over um, – exa- I mean, the captain is very, very, very important. You need a, a good leader, very natural kind of uh, leader who can uh, operate the team how, how he wishes in that leadership kind of uh, method that he decides to go down. But we don't ever celebrate good vice captains. And a good vice captain is a different style of personality generally than the captain that kind of runs the dressing room – I wouldn't say as much, but in certain aspects of cricket, equally as much in other aspects of the team. And I think that there are many that are outstanding vice captains who can't be captains. And there are a lot of captains who couldn't be vice captains because they want to be the front and leader of the team. So I just see Ollie's the most amazing. But I had one in Triscothic. Triscothic was a gem. He was a perfect vice captain. Um and did as much behind the scenes that people didn't see, uh, and, sh- and and they don't get credit. Vice captains don't get any credit. What type of things fourth. would he do, Vaughn? Uh, example of Trez. Oh, just run the many. You know, there's also all sorts of little fragments in the team, isn't there? And 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 little not cliques, but little groups. And he'd make sure that everyone was fine. And he'd be offering his because he was a world class batter. He'd be offering up his um, methods of play against certain bowlers. Great, great leader in terms of uh, the way that he operated as a player and, and his professionalism. Um, you know, so he was leading the team away from... And also on the field, the amount of time that he'd walk past me and give me some tactical information, I'd go, yeah, perfect, I'll go with that. Uh, but I get the credit because I'm the captain. Hmm. So I, I yeah. do think in cricket we over-egg that, you know, why, why is it that the vice-captain, oh, he's got to be the captain? Well, he might just be a brilliant vice-captain, but he's not quite not quite got the the skill sets to be the the leader of the team which is the the captain but you're still equally as important in my opinion in cricket uh being either even if you're just a leader in the team and not the captain and, and everyone should be trying to lead in the team um i, I think we over egg a lot of uh what happens in cricket we don't celebrate actually that you can it's like the football analogy you know the assistant manager the manager, some yeah. great great managers that have had quality assistant managers and how often have you seen the assistant managers move on to another club to be the manager and guess what it doesn't work because yeah. they are brilliant assistant managers and i just think that's the same in cricket now gilly you are one of australia's greatest vice captains were you, you <laughs> were you doing the same sort of thing as marcus triscothic were you keeping the groups together were you giving any advice to your captain out on the field what, what were you like as a vice captain I was trying to undermine my captains as much as I could. <laughs> I was trying to white ant them whenever I could. I didn't really like Steve War or Ricky Pont. Nah, I, um, nah, I, actually, I, I've just sat there and listened with great interest there uh, to what you said there for me. I, can, uh, I guess that resonates with me. I never coveted the leadership position. I never wanted to be Australian captain. I was by default afforded the opportunity a few times when – uh, Stephen and Ricky were injured, um, but you know I, I was bestowed the vice captaincy by default when Warney had an uh, indiscretion off-field stuff where the Cricket Australia at the time said, "Well, we've got to discipline him. He's run foul of, of the administration a few times. He can't be vice captain because you know what happens if Stephen got injured? He becomes captain, and that they didn't want that image at the time. So eleven Test matches in, I was made vice captain. Um, I never." ever thought I was going to become Australian captain when Stephen retired. It was going to probably be between Warney and I always thought Punter was going to get the gig and, and rightly so, he, he should have. Uh, I thought he was always going to be the right tactician, the right leader, as you say, Vaughney, the guy that could inspire and lead a group in a direction. 
And then I just, I loved, I really enjoyed that vice captaincy role in trying to be the conduit between the, the top level and the rest of the troops, try to let the captain know the feel, the vibe of the group, but also shield him from any of the shit if there was anything going on or if there was any issues or so you tried to be that sort of uh, buffer zone between the two. And, um, yeah, re- really enjoyed that aspect. Tactically, you'd throw your two bobs worth in occasionally, but I was never a great tactician. You know, guys like Warney or Mark War or, you know, any, Hados, Jay, all that, those experienced guys, as you say, Vaughney, everyone tries to lead in a, some capacity. So that was the way I, I saw it. Um, and it was – it's a good point, Vaughney. We probably, we probably do give too much credit – to the person with the armband on at the time and mm. not enough to those around. And I've been the beneficiary of that in 2004. I was captain when we won there for the first time in ages and we haven't won since. That wasn't because I was captain. That was 30 years of learning stuff and certainly Steve War in 01 and Punter and our whole leadership group coming together with John Buchanan having a match plan. I just had to keep the ship steer, steered in the same direction. I didn't bring anything new to it so um yeah it's a good it's a good point um yeah absolutely i can't believe we were actually talking cricket but i've got another question on that because we've seen it with ollie pope got some uh a few runs against the west indies struggled here joe root obviously getting runs galore but some people think he struggled a bit more when captain when you guys were captain and took that on a bit was there a big transition did you feel a responsibility for having to score um and or did it feel different because your place was sort of solidified because you were skipper um, Vaughan, I guess you first. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I struggled at the start because there was so much going on, and and I focused too much energy on probably aspects of the leadership, i.e., away from playing and practice than I needed to. There was probably a lot of conversations and meetings that I got involved in that really I didn't need to be there, but I did because I was uh, the captain, new and fresh. Uh, and it took me a while to get used to that kind of um, that playing and captaincy role. You got to remember, you've got a bat, you got to watch the ball and score runs. Um, you know, and, and Ollie's early into that. You know, he's only two games in. I think we're, we're making a little bit too much of the fact that he's failed four times. That can happen in any any way. It's more the method of the way that he's batting. And if you think about the way that he was playing before he got the captaincy, just scored 100 against the West Indies, pretty much rock solid at number three in terms of uh, the era of basball. He's been uh, one of the successes. And then suddenly he gets the captaincy and he scored no runs. So he's kind of in alignment with with his failures with the bat, and then he's got the captaincy. Um, you know, I just think England will possibly learn from this in the future, that if an interim position becomes available, just make sure that you choose the right person uh, to be the captain. You don't want to put that player under a huge amount of pressure because now, you know, he needs some runs at the end. I'm not saying his place is under threat and he'll get a Pakistan, he'll get a New Zealand, but... You know, there's a lot of players that are are, are kind of around the England side being mentioned. Jordan Cox came into the side. He's a brilliant batter. You know, he will play for England. Jamie Smith, oh, is he a bit too deep at six or seven? Could he get higher up the order? Ben Stokes comes back in. Zach Crawley comes back in. You know, there will be a player that will miss out. And, you know, two games ago, I guess Ollie Pope's name possibly wouldn't have been mentioned in that category. But now he's had two failures in two consecutive test matches. He's a part of that conversation if people are going to miss out. And, um, you know, only he knows whether it's the captaincy or whether it's just the game. The game, you have two bad games and suddenly, um, as a player, no one really mentions it, that the captaincy obviously is not with you, so it can't be a, uh, affecting you. But once you get the captaincy and you fail, um, you know, people start to talk about it. So I, I just hope that, um, you know, the leadership group in, in, in the future learn from, you know, making sure that they don't just think the vice captain has to be the captain. It, that's not the way. You know, vice captains can be brilliant vice captains and just keep them as that. Did yep. you make runs when you were captain in India, Gilly? Uh, well, on that tour, I was shitting bricks about taking the captaincy because, you know, 2001, I scored 100 in the first test and then I then I backed it up in the next two tests a bit Ollie Pope like actually Ollie outscored me quite significantly um, <laughs> in the next two tests as cap uh, uh, in India not not as captain sorry in 2001 I got naught naught and one one so I had some pretty serious demons to get over when I went back to India and they asked me to captain so I was panicking um, I got a hundred in the first test and then faded away by the back end of the series um, I 
as I say, I didn't cover the captaincy. I didn't particularly love it and enjoy it. What I do remember Ricky Ponting saying, to your point, Vaughn, about at the start, obviously there's so much going on. There's more press conferences. There's more meetings with team management. There's head in the game of, you know, tactics. And then, but Ricky always said, you got to, when you put the pads on going to the nets, you, you've just got to find a way to turn into, you know, the batter. Or yeah. if it was me putting the gloves on, doing my keeping practice and just be the wicket keeper. And it's a, you know, I'll turn our podcast into a, a wonderful um, one that everyone can look for to look for the meaning of life and philosophies of life. Uh, someone once sent me a quote once when I was um, on the Ashes tour, actually, <laughs> when I was of 2005, when I was trying to be a batsman, a vice captain, a wicket keeper, a husband, and a father, and I was doing a shit job at all of it. They sent me a quote and said, Wherever you are, be there. Whatever's yeah, yeah. in front of you at that moment, give it 100% because everything else doesn't matter for that moment. So it's a, it's a good quote uh, and it's relative to this captaincy situation. You know, Ollie or any young captain needs to realise a way as soon as they can that just compartmentalise their responsibilities and make the most of them. Mm. Now, obviously, lots of chat around Ollie Pope's captaincy, lots of chat around Joe Root and his amazing ability, but Gus Atkinson... I mean, yeah. I've, I've, it's been a long time since we saw someone burst onto the scene like this. Uh, Vaughn, I just wanted for our listeners, and our listeners are all around the world, do you know the Gus Atkinson story? Like, you know, what's he – because he's 26, he's waited a long time to get into this team, and now he's absolutely dominating. Yeah, I mean, it's I mean, he's, he's always um, been out to well quite sharp. I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't realise he could bat like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that was the perfect <laughs> innings. He 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 didn't miss a a tune. I mean he 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 missed one ball. They they kind of uh, went upstairs for a review. It was missing leg by about six inches. So he didn't make a mistake at all throughout the whole innings. Um, you'll read some of the notes. It's quite a sad story. He lost his mother in two thousand and twenty um, to a car accident uh, in London, and the story's coming out today. So uh, about how that happened. So it's a real sad story. And his his mum was the one that really pushed him. You know, pushed him into cricket, and you know he 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 says there's a quote about the motivation that he found to go on and you know be this England player uh, after the tragedy is uh, is something that you know is, is is remarkable. And to think that he's come into the England side, so he's been around for a while. He was in India, didn't get a game, and to think that inside five Test matches, now he's on the honours board. What is it? Five times at Lords, That's three right. on the five wicket ball, ten wicket, ball, and I mean to get a hundred. I mean, on social media, the the, the Indians fan. Well, I think you've got the new Jack Callis. Yeah. <laughs> so, what was he going to go and do? Stand at second slip as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking. I mean, of, he, yeah. he, he's he, he's had a remarkable journey. Uh, he's deadpan. You know, he very, very rarely changes his uh, emotions. He's he's very simple. You know, when we interview him after the day's play, he's almost like the most simple. Um, cricketer that you've ever spoken to but I love it you know and I hope that never changes I hope he just carries on he'll, he'll have days and weeks where it's not quite going his way but he's on this ride at the minute and um can he can he go up to you know number seven as a batter possibly not but just keep him down eight and nine and just allow him to have a bit of freedom to play a few shots and I don't I don't know how many test hundreds he'll get he might not get another one but I do think he'll create impact on a regular basis because he can hit a ball purely yeah. Speaking of the social media, there was I saw those Jack Callis, few people doing that. There were a couple of other entertaining tweets that caught my eye. Um, first one, or just interesting, first one from Yaz Rana, Yaz Wisdom. Gus Atkinson now has many Test match fivers as F Freddie Flintoff, and the second one was <laughs> from Matty Leeds United Football Club. <laughs> Next time Tim Payne talks about England cricket team, which will be very soon because he can't go two hours without doing it. <laughs> probably a good time to remind him Gus Atkinson has more test tons than him. Yeah. <laughs> he was trending a bit. Oh, oh that, that, that's, that's it. It's when, when you start, you know, people say, oh, you know, he's got more more test hundreds than Sachin at Lords. <laughs> well, and me. <laughs> Not that I'm in Sachin's yeah. bracket, but anyway. Yeah. Has he done it in Yorkshire on a wet Tuesday? Oh, no, that's a good question. No, I don't think he has. So I will, he's, though. he's had a good start, and, and, and yeah, he might get an opportunity to go and play in the toughest uh, areas in the world on a Tuesday in uh, in obviously Yorkshire. But uh, no, he, he looks a good player. He's, he's a good lad as well. So uh, 
hopefully, fingers crossed. And when he bowls, he gets these wickets. I mean, he gets them with fuller length deliveries, kind of decent length and short balls. He's got that that ability to, to obviously, with a new ball, it'll zip around. He's good with that. Uh, with the older ball, he goes a little bit uh, bit shorter and bowls into the pitch. And then he's got this this bouncer theory that uh, England turned to, and he's got a few wickets with that as well, which, which it should put him in good uh, a good position to get wickets in, in, in the likes of Australia, New Zealand, Pakistan, when the pitches are a little bit flatter. Now, Gilly Sri Lanka, obviously, they've lost the series, unfortunately, but there is one shining light, which is Kamindu Mendes. He's mm. got 74 off 120 uh, in a very difficult innings. Um, this kid can bat, right? He's what he's coming in at seven at the moment. Would you be pushing him up the order? Would you be trying to build a side around him? Oh, she's a top order. I think I can't remember what the stat was, whether they averaged what 18 or something as, as a collective top six, I think, which was the lowest of any touring team for a long period of time. So there'll be temptation to throw him up there. Um, I don't know his backstory of where he spent most of his sort of short career prior to getting into test match cricket, but he looks pretty complete and, uh, and he's, he's a name that, you know, obviously a lot of this action was taking place overnight here. So the first thing in the morning, get up and you're checking the scores and that was yeah. the name that you're going straight to. And, you know, to see that he got the 70-odd again uh, in challenging, you know, times and situations in around the rest of it. I don't know, Vaughan, does he have the game? You watched every ball of this. Does he have the game yeah. to get up into the top five or something like that? Yeah, well, what I like about Sri Lanka is obviously um, number one, I have to say that the decision at the toss by uh, Dan and Di De Silva <laughs> um, on a day at Lords where there wasn't a cloud in the sky and the forecast of the whole week was, and I know you're going to be surprised in Australia, it was a it was a forecast, it was going to be hot all week and it didn't disappoint, it was hot. Um to to think that they had three seamers and one spinner, and you could argue that the spinner was the best bowler at Old Trafford, uh, Jai Saria, and the skipper looked up and saw no clouds and saw a very dry surface and thought, "Tell you what, we'll bowl." I mean, it, 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 it's up there with one of it. It I reckon it surpasses NASA in Brisbane in two thousand two. Oh. I, I really do. I think Tim Payne made a poor call, mentioning Tim again in 2019 at the Oval. Thought that was an iffy call, but I, I, I think this could be up there. Mm. I really do. I mean, I love- it, it was quite evident. I mean, England played some poor shots, the, the lose three wickets, but it was evident as soon as Joe Root faced one ball that he was going to get 100. Um, yeah, so I, I think it was... And also, um, Kamindu's their best player by country mile. In second innings, they sent Jai Sarif as a light watchman. It was a live watchman, not a night watchman, <laughs> which is new, which is new to the game. Which I enjoy anything that's new to the game. But he came in as light watchman, um, and Kamindo ended up batting eight in the yeah. second. So not Jeez. only just trying to make that terrible call at the start of the week in terms of the toss, they then ended up with their best player batting at eight. <laughs> Did you? I, I thought he's, what he said is quote to Silver's quote to the BBC was very good. Uh, he said, "Definitely, I got it wrong." <laughs> <laughs> and that was it. It was very, very was silent. I was there when he said that. It was nice. Oh, it, yeah. was a sh- it was a. Sh- I mean, I, I do, Gil. Right in this era of stats, information, you know, Sanof Jaisar is the head coach. Ian Bell is is their batting guru on this tour mm. of the Sri Lankans. Um, so he knows, you know, England as, as well as anybody. And when you've got a spinner that's decent and you've got just three quicks, so you think, oh, if you bowl first, it's going to be tough with three quicks because they're going to do the majority and then the spinner's not going to have much to bowl into on day one. I mean, it's a no-brainer. Even if there'd been a bit of grass there, you'd have had to have bought, uh, bat first because of your yeah. formation and your attack. With all this, I, I, I'm just staggered how many things I see wrong these days with all the information and there's so yeah. banged obvious decisions to be made. Um Maybe they just thought that the Baz Ballers were come, going to come out and Baz Ball and give them a load of opportunities, but uh, oh, it was it was a dodgy call. Yeah, I mean, they actually very nearly got 300 in the fourth innings. <laughs> um, shows how good a deck it was with Chandler Naran, <laughs> Karuna Ratna um, getting runs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Now, um, obviously, the, new, the next test starts on Friday. Um, I want you to put your coaching hats on for a second. What does... Sri Lanka do? What do they do to give themselves a chance in this third test? Do you want to go first here, Gilly? Uh, bat first. 
End of it. What like seems like a, a dry period at the Oval. Mm. Um, oh, I don't know, mate. I, I'm I'm trying to as as we're sort of taking dissecting this series. I'm trying to I'm trying to have a glance at some of the comments on the back of your tweet, Vaughny, about two tiered test this, system, two divisions. Mm. Um, I don't know. I, I, test cricket. There's three or four iconic series around and it seems in real strife, doesn't it? It seems in, I don't want to be the doomsday, but it's hard to know what the right formula is. I don't have it. I don't, mm. um, I don't sort of bag any suggestion really. I think everything should be on the table to have a look at ways of trying to make it survive. But, you know, that Bangladesh-Pakistan series that scores pretty much all of under 300, aren't they? Um, yep. Yeah, they are. Uh, some of the batting collapses, you know, teams being six, 20 for six and stuff like that. It's a real uh, – there's a stat about the West Indies of hit last 10 years. It was pretty much on the back of Chris Gale and Nicky Puran, I think, now. Like, they hit the most sixes in T20 internationally. But, you know, that's um, – does that reflect then in the test cricket or not? I'm trying not to mm. make the bleeding obvious one and saying that's fully to blame, but – just different mindsets, different priorities in different regions, I think, and, and different, I guess you have to keep going back to the financial situation and the resource they were to put in. Is there incentive to put in the resource or, or try and uh, divert, divert the resources to, to try and rectify it or push it up? It's pretty, it's pretty drab watching, really. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm, I, I'm now probably oh, I'm 15 years into broadcast and nearly 40 years in the game. And it's the same conversation that's been happening for at least 25 years of those four mm. years that I've been involved in cricket where everyone said, oh, no, cr test cricket needs something. And I just can't stand the fact that, you know, you get a Lord's Day 4, and you mentioned at the top of the show, Pro, about the crowd. Administrators continue to tell us that test match cricket is the number one format. But administrators continuously make mistakes with test match cricket and do absolutely nothing with it. So they sell tickets on day four for 90 odd quid or a hundred pound a ticket because, you know, generally you do sell day four tickets in the UK uh, at that kind of price. And day five, you get to it, you know, you're getting for a tenner or 20 quid or sometimes free, which is great. But, you know, I, I just, I look and think, you know, surely you've got to work out that Sri Lanka aren't uh, the, the, the best team at the minute. So it's not possibly going to go to day four. So why are you selling tickets? You know, you know, you made a mistake a few days before that it happened. Why don't you send a message out saying, oh, by the way, I think we might have made a mistake. It's going to be 20 quid and you get your refund back from your £95 ticket. Just to try and fill it up. If that was a 100 final or a T20, I will guarantee that that would not be the case. They would do something because they want it full for T20 or the 100. You know, but they kind of had this, oh, yeah, we only sold 7,000 tickets for day four. We'll just leave it. Well, no, because test cricket is the one format that we need to look after that little bit more so. Now, mm. it is radical me saying, oh, you know, two leagues of six. But why not? Because the best best test match that's happened in, in and around the UK this summer has been Ireland versus Zimbabwe. Two teams of a similar standard. You know, you're looking at Pakistan, Bangladesh. Very competitive. Clearly, at the minute, those two teams of equal standard or, or similar. And it's very competitive. Great to watch. What what we don't want to see is, is too many more series where you just think... You know, it's just too one-sided. You know the result before the game starts. There's every now and again the odd shot, but it's only every now and again. You know, what will happen in the future is that people just won't buy tickets. They'll go, well, I'm not... From, so we saw day four was the week, that, the day this week that no one bought any tickets. Well, that'll go to day three. And eventually it'll go to day two. Now, administrators generally have two or three years in their position. So I know it's difficult for those people that say the ICC suddenly come in and go, all right, on my watch, I'm going to be that person or that group of people to suddenly radically change Test cricket. They tried it with the Test Championship, for the the World Test Championships. It doesn't work, you know. Every two, there's a, no one gives a hoot. No one gives a hoot about that. But you... if you had two leagues and you had a top six, number one is that every series would be hot. You would think, and if you had a league of six in the second division or League Two, let's call it every. Again, you would think it would be decent. The most important aspect is the ICC suddenly realised that 
to have these leagues, you can't just have all the wealth going to the top three and it drip feeds down to the other other nine because, you know, clearly it, 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 League Two, they'll just end up not playing Test cricket because there's nothing there for yeah. them. So as long as they spread the wealth evenly and allow the Sri Lankans, the West Indians, you know, New Zealand time, Bangladesh, enough money to create their pathway programme and their, their structure and their facilities to provide, you know, an opportunity for them to play good cricket and produce good cricketers, you know, I just think it's the only way forward. And, you know, if you finish top of the second division, to get into the first division, you've got to go and beat the team that finishes bottom of the, the first division in a one-off game. You've got to go and win. And then you go up. I mean, how big a game would that be? It'd be fantastic. But I, I just worry that it, it, it's too much like hard work. The other thing that I would change, sorry, I'm on a bit of a rant, is yeah. I, I would just have a three-month window. And I'm not saying which months are absolutely locked in. Three-month window where you have to negotiate with all these teams around, all these countries around the world, I've got all these franchise leagues, but we want a three-month window where test match cricket is only played. That is it. So this week, there should have been four, you know, how many teams? We've got 12 safe teams. There'll be six games, all played at the same time. So the narrative around that time is just test cricket. That's all we're talking about. So our podcast now would just be test cricket. And then in a month's time or six weeks' time, it goes back to the franchise leagues and the white ball stuff. And we'll be all over that for nine months. I mean, and people say, oh, three months, is it enough? Well, it, I, I can't see it being any more than that with, with all these franchise leagues and these white ball tournaments. So that'd be my radical. Two leagues, three months dedicated purely to Test Match Cricket every year uh, and just give Test Match Cricket a chance. Because if not, I, I do think on our watch, I think something horrible may happen with the Test Match game and it will be that one or two teams go, you know what, we're not playing. We're not playing anymore, which will be desperately sad. Okay, Vaughn, I put it to you. Question without notice. You have to split into two divisions right now. Who's in yeah. the top division? Uh, India, England, Australia, uh, South Africa, New Zealand, and I think just Pakistan. Okay. They're about to lose to Bangladesh quite convincingly. Yeah. That's why I said I think. Yeah. Um, I think. Actually, well, yes. it's funny you say, you mentioned the ICC a few times. And when we were uploading last week's episode, the first 10 comments were all the same, which was along the lines of, yay, Jay Shah, ICC chairman. Now, you're mm. obviously, that happened while we were uploading last week. You're obviously mm. very influential with the ICC and Indian cricket in general, Vaughn. Do you mm. think this is something you can get past just in... Jay's ear to sort of get over the line because that's a big appointment. Yeah, I mean, I don't have his number, but um, I- I'm sure someone can send me his email. I think you know, he he's a mover and shaker. You know, he gets he gets things done. So I, I hope that he-, he he will have an eye to making sure that Test Match Cricket um, can be a-, a product that we all love for a lot, lot longer than obviously the next few years. And to do that, I just think we need more more competitive series. We need it spoken about marketed a lot more than we we, we see at the minute uh I, I don't want it to become an afterthought and i i feel at the minute it's it's like an afterthought oh it's just test cricket it'll carry on you know you know let's just leave it if you just leave anything these days um things overtake it and i think at the minute um the franchise leagues the white ball stuff in, in terms of the administrators again they'll deny it and publicly they'll say test cricket is the pinnacle bullshit they're doing nothing about it Bonnie, I don't want to pick a hole in your theory, but you've said a three-month period only Mm. for Test cricket. Now, there's two separate seasons based on the hemispheres. Mm. So are you saying it's three months just in the north or is it one and a half months in the north, one and a half months in the south? I did say say three months, but I'm not saying exactly where each year. So, you know, Ah. England. Ultimate. In England and in, in Ashes, clearly. And also, why can't we host and why can't Australia host and New Zealand host more teams? So why can't Bangladesh play Sri Lanka in the UK? Bangladesh mm-hmm. play Sri Lanka, back home there'd be 10 people watching. If Bangladesh okay, came so and played yeah. Sri Lanka here in a test match, let's say Taunton or Sussex, I guarantee there'll be four or 5,000 in the ground. Mm-hmm. So the so product like and the, the spectacle will be better. And of course, it's not home advantage, but... I just think Test Cricket needs something completely radical to happen to make it more appealing. And if it is that we host four or five series at the same time in the UK, we've got that many grounds, Australia could host four or five. Another couple of series could be in New Zealand. 
You know, then we might have a, a segment in India and the subcontinent where we go and play three three games and England play someone else. You know, it's like, just think out that they're, they're brilliant at thinking outside of the box in terms of the white ball game. But then absolutely useless of thinking outside the box for the, the one format that needs a little bit of help, which is Test Match Cricket. Everything mm. should be on the table for Test Match Cricket and no one should complain about anything that kind of comes into the change of it because at the minute we're seeing a product that every now and again is the best product by a country mile, but it's only every now and again. Yeah, There's too many times when we're talking like we are now going, shit, we have a problem and nothing gets done. There you go. Big test match overhaul. While we are talking, there is a second series taking place. Bangladesh now needs how many? Just Holly? 70. Yeah. 70. Yeah. Now, well, you are good mates with Dizzy Gillespie. This will be yep. two, lo- two losses from two. Um, what, what do you got there, Vaughn? That's, that's Root versus Vera. Oh, we'll get to that in a sec. Let's just quickly touch yeah. on Pakistan and Bangladesh. Gilly, will you chat to Dizzy after this and see how he's doing and give any words Jeez. of advice? Well, I don't know how much advice I'd be able to give him in that situation, but uh, do keep in touch with Diz quite regularly, yeah. So, And he did say once he's through the series, he's happy to come on. So we'll see where we get to. Well, he, yeah. um, he watched the social. Um, you know, he called him Perfect yeah. Diplomat. And Vaughn, he mentioned his um, thing on the balcony with Sham Mahmood. Um, Masood, he said, tell Vaughn that thing on the balcony with Sham. He gave crying face emoji oh, so first. he's DM'd us. He's DM'd us. Oh, yeah. With Sean and I was... <laughs> Um, was him being a bit grumpy about our replacement new ball, which was 25 overs older than the one that was replaced. He said to me they should have replaced the ball closer to the condition of the one lost. That's what he was grumpy about, which is very amusing because we did a social the next day and Vaughn said very rarely is the replacement ball worse and older than the original, which is apparently what happened <laughs> uh, to Pakistan. Is this, just so I know, is this information that Dizzy would want on our podcast if he's DM'd? <laughs> this isn't going to be... What's yeah. he a bit concerned with what you're going to say there, but I think that's, that's all good. fine. That's, that's absolutely good. fine. Yeah, Sean was unhappy, unhappy with the ball. Oh, I gotcha. Um, okay. that, <laughs> that is, I reckon that is unlucky. If you're if you're replacing the ball and you get a worse one, phew, it's, it, it doesn't happen often. That no, that's unlucky. Well, it's mm. happened certainly if you're an England team. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Happens yeah, to opposing sides, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> and and, and yeah. one thing that was mentioned on our Discord and socials in this test match, some people call it the greatest test knock ever, which is big. But as Vaughney said, 26 for six Bangladesh. Litton Daz went yeah. on to get 138 yeah, in, in, in that, in some interesting conditions. Um, it yeah, was it looks great, like... quite funny at Lord's Day. So we had one of those times, you know, when the, the, the light, lights are on, beautiful day, but it's a bit dark. Um, so the spinners have to bowl. Yeah, no, no one had been hit. No one's under any threat. But oh, spinners got to bowl. <laughs> and then I just said, well, you know, it'd be a lot easier if you just turned to a pink ball. You know, and then you'd carry on because that's brilliant yeah, yeah. to work with the lights. And I think legally it's kind of, uh, it's sound for that to happen. I think it's quite hard for umpires because they're, they're wary of carrying on because of uh, if someone got injured. And so, oh, you can't do that. You can't change a ball. You know, it might do too too much. Oh, well, it fucking did last week with the red ball, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Vaughny, yes, a little something on your screen there. You want? We're talking Joe Root stats versus King Coley, Virat Coley. Now, f- first of all, before we get into it, um, we were looking at this today. Obviously, Joe Root, he's hunting down Sachin. Mm. He mm. he's only thirty three. He's played one hundred and forty five tests. Sachin played two hundred. Mm. And he only needs about two and a half thousand to catch him. Before you get into your Joe Root versus Virat Kohli, do you think Joe will chase down the little master? Yes, I do. Yeah, Gilly, I do. will he get there? Mm, don't know. <laughs> he might, mm. <laughs> but he might not. Jesus, that's a oh. Yeah, I think uh, it's more than two and I think it's I think it's three and a half thousand. Three and a half. My maths is no good. Yeah, I think I think it's three. Yeah. Well, he's on fifteen thousand nine hundred and twenty-one. Yeah. Is Sachin three and a half? Yep, three and a half. <laughs> Twelve thousand three hundred seventy-seven. My apologies to all the mathematicians out there that are getting shitty. Well, you forgot Stern in the intro again, so he'll be. Fuming. Oh God! Yeah, yeah. 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 all the mathematicians. <laughs> it's three. It's three years. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, thousand rounds a year. What, how old is he? 33. 
33. Mm-hmm. He's a youngster, isn't he? Um, oh, I've got, I got no idea what his appetite's like. I mean, he's clearly pretty hungry at the moment, but if he has a mm. desire to keep going, he's going to phase out of white ball completely, isn't he? Now, mm. if he has already pretty much, but what do you reckon? Yeah, Vaughn, you think he will? Uh, Probably. I, I think, unless his back snaps, he is the most uh, enthusiastic lover of the game. I, I don't think yeah, that's right. suddenly going to go away. He's obviously had the captaincy that took a bit out of him, but he's obviously uh, not involved with that anymore. He's just a, a player, a batter, rocks up, you know, knows his game more than ever before. Um, I, I'd be amazed if he doesn't. I'll be totally honest with you. I'd be absolutely staggered. He's playing beautifully. All right. And now your comparison against Virat. Talk us well, through it. Just came, it, like, it was just uh, Henry Moran yeah. who works with me at Sorry. BBC. He... Sorry, I've just had a thought. Mm. <laughs> Tell us. I'll answer that question after the Ashes next year about Joe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a good good point. Um, but even if it goes wrong, I still think he'll carry on. Um, just on that, I mean, if if Joe does go past that, it could be the best thing that happens to Test match cricket because there's no way Jay Shaw and the team at the BCCL will want an English player at the top of that list. <laughs> 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 They'll want an Indian at the top. So I think uh, that'll uh, secure Test Match cricket forever because it'll take forever for someone to go past him. Um, <laughs> just on the... Yeah, so Henry Moran, who worked at the BBC with it, uh, he, he just, you know, brought some uh, stats to light. Um, Virat and the... Because it's a compound. like Super... Is it Super 4? There's Joe, Virat, Fab, Kane. Fab 4. Fab 4, Steve mm. Smith. I, I, did did Marnus jump into there for a bit? Or No, Baba. No. Baba is that. No, Kane okay, Williamson. Kane. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, these stats were just came to light. And by the way, he's improved upon um, these stats um, since last week. Virat, uh, 191 innings, Joe, 263. So Joe's played more knocks. Um, Virat, 8,848 runs. Joe Root, 12,131. Again, he's improved upon that. Uh, the high score's interesting. Virat's got a 254 not out. Uh, Joe Root's got 254 out. Uh, average. We're at 49.15, uh, Joe Root 50.33, but he'll have improved upon that because he scored a few runs at Lords. Uh, strike rate, actually interesting. Uh, we're at 55.56, Joe Root 56.70, but he'll have improved upon that because he scored his quickest 100 at Lords. Um, hundreds, Joe, uh, we're at 29, Joe Root 32, that was, but now 34. <laughs> Uh, 50s, uh, obviously Joe Root had 64. He's got a few more now because of Lords. We're at 30. And sixes, sixes hit. We're at 26, Joe Root 44. I don't think he hit a six at Lords. So, um, yet yeah, on stats alone, Joe Root is a better player. And there's our clip, Ollie. There you go, yeah. <laughs> and, and throwing one more in there. Since the start of 2021, Joe Root has scored as many test centuries as the rest of the Fab Four combined. Mm. It's Coley, Wilson, and Smith combined three years. Wow. Three Can I years. ask you, right, with those numbers, those numbers are ridiculous for both players, two brilliant players. You know, Joe doesn't get the same attention, does he? I mean, Virat, I would say, across all formats, you could argue is obviously just ahead of Joe Root. But in Test cricket alone, Joe Root's numbers are, are better. That might be the 1.3 billion people. That <laughs> is that the problem? It might be. What are you guys, about 80 million? How many in the UK? Yeah, not even well, that. Joe, Joe's town of Sheffield's got about 35 people. So, um, 35 um, people. But we've got, we've, got a, um, we've got a quiz on him later. Oh, so we do. that oh. might boost it up. Yeah. We do. now, this, we're doing stats. I wanted to do one. I think you two need to do a press release. So currently he's on 34 test hundreds. If he gets... Ooh. Two more hundreds in the next test series, he will go past the amount of hundreds that Adam Gilchrist nice. and Michael Vaughan have combined. Mm. So, yeah. did you say test series or the next test? The next test. test sorry. So you have eighteen, Vaughan, Gilly seventeen, so mm. thirty-five. So I think if he goes past you two, you need to say, you know, yeah, you press know, release. yeah, press release. Yeah. Congrats. Uh, you yeah, deserve it. yeah, release a statement. Yeah. We condone it. <laughs> we'll put that. Yeah, but I mean, does he? Can he drink? Or <laughs> he, I mean, what sort of bloke is he? Like, come on, it's not all yeah. about hundreds. Jesus, no, right. no, I think he likes. Out. I think he likes a Guinness. 
I think he's oh, pretty yeah. good at he that. He can probably well. drink better than me, but uh, yeah. well, oh, well, right. how many stumpings has he had? Yeah, how many legs like stumpings off Warnie did he get? Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Come on, let's not over, let's not over, over egg him. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good numbers though, Gil. Yeah. They are uh, exceptional numbers, I mean, particularly for Joe Root. I, I'm looking at Virat's numbers there in front of me that you got, and they're, they're, they're extraordinary. I mean, they, um, you're thinking of the likes of, you know, from Australian point of view, Chapel Ponting. The 50-number mark is always that benchmark of greatness, isn't it? It's, it, it's always mm. seemed to have been. But, but you couple Virat's with his ODI particularly, mm. um, and obviously his T20 career, that, that, that's just quite fascinating to have so been around and witnessed that guy. So T20 was saying Vera. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's what? Vera. Best player over, over of those two. Better out of him and Joe Root at T20. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'd take him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. 50 overs going Vera. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, test cricket going Joe, yeah. In the last uh, short while, definitely. Um, mm. And I think those, those stats... Those over, stats overall, Gil. Over a well, long period of time, Joe Root's stats are... Well, he's the best England that's ever had. Uh, mm. But let me ask you, Gilly, Virat or Joe Root versus Australia, who are you going? Oh, where are we playing? Uh, mm. Well, first of all, in Australia. And it's, it's the whacker. <laughs> it's hot. In Australia. I don't think Joe scored 100 here, has he? No. No, but he will. Virat so, scored oh, one of the best tons I've seen at, at, at the uh, Perth Stadium in the first test match ever played there. That was yeah, probably was, yeah. different gravy. Um, mm. Mm, uh, I'd probably say Virat. Mm. I, I, I wouldn't argue with that in Australia. I would say Vera in Australia against the Aussies. Yep. Anywhere else, I'm going Joe Root. In India? Yep. Look at Joe Root's record in India. Yeah. Martin yeah, Quiz. Oh, is it? Sorry, but oh, sorry, Ollie. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone stay calm. <laughs> now, uh, we've see, reached the see, time. Actually, you just brought something up there, Prevo. It may happen with my radical idea that, you know, Jerry yeah. might back play against Australia and India. Yeah. Wouldn't in that be future. good? I mean, yeah. again, it's just, you got to think out the box. Well, why doesn't the World, yeah. the World Test Championship, like the NFL Super Bowl, or it should move mm. around every year? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like next year Cup. it's at Lords. Oh, that's something new. I, I, I wonder why the pitch was getting nice and dry and. Starting to spin a bit. <laughs> Wait, where's the next one? Lord. Yeah, Lords. Yeah, Lords. Oh, that's good. Something new. Um, all right. Hey, we do have. Did you want to touch? Just very quickly. Very quickly. quickly we just, we're, we're going we are, along. We're just very quickly. We're just the, the big bash draft did happen. There's some English names <laughs> in there. Um, I mean, obviously, they've gone um, picks one and two being English. Um, that I think Gilly, you wanted a bit from, from Vaughan because there's some interesting stuff there. Obviously, friend of the show, Ben Duckett was first pick. And then Laurie Evans was second pick taken by Renegades because the Scorchers then basically gave it gave that up and wow. they took Finn Allen. So, um, but yeah. Gilly, you mentioned a bit of info on a few Jacob Bethel being one name that's obviously very good in the hundred. But um, didn't know if you saw that and any any sort of comments on the draft. Oh, it's another one of those. We sort of had the brief discussion around the uh, IPL about whether you mix mix the teams up every three years or whatever. It's it's pretty pretty disappointing from a Perth Scorchers fan base point of view that and and it was a you know a team decision that they went with Finn Allen first I think that came down maybe to um availability of Laurie Evans not quite being available for the entire duration but geez he he'd built up quite a cult following over here and and performed admirably for them he was a real part of the fabric of that team I think so um it, it makes it a bit confusing for the fans a little bit Frustrating, a little bit disappointing, but yeah, there's a number of English names in there that um, I'm not overly familiar with. I wasn't all that familiar with Paul Walter before last year's Big Bash. <laughs> so I don't say Walter. this. Don't say this as if I'm disappointed about not knowing these names. I'm actually quite excited. <laughs> Tall Paul was a revelation, mm. wasn't he, Vaughan? And, and gents, yeah, you like were watching that one. 
Brilliant. So, um, yeah, Tommy Allsop, uh, that's not a name I know a huge amount about. Jacob Bethel, um, mm-hmm. a few, uh, there's a few there, Vaughn. Is there any one of those, you know, unknown, lesser known names to the broader cricketing public, take away the English? Uh, who's who's going to jump out at us? Well, uh, Tommy Allsop's a good player. Sussex gives it a white left hander. He gives it a good clout. Um, Chohan's there, yeah? The leg spinner. Yes, yeah. Yeah, he's From the Yorkshire. Sixers. Yeah, he's 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 an interesting pick. He's he's injured at the minute, um, but in T uh, Twenty cricket, he's done great for for the Yorkies. And um, yeah, he, he's exactly what you want in T Twenty cricket. Someone that can spin it either way. He's got a little bit of something about him. So uh, yes, I'll be interested to see how he goes. You know, this Matthew good, Hurst you know, in in the UK, he's not spoken about hugely, but he's done okay, and he's not under yeah. any kind of. I've not heard his name mentioned in, in England or in and around the groups there. But mm. uh, this could, you know, as we've seen from many players, you look at Phil Salt many years ago, he made his name in the Big Bash. Yep. And I just wonder if Chohan is, is, is this, this is his kind of platform to go and do something and send is his name any, around the globe. Yeah, is there any truth to the rumour that the Adelaide strikers want to give Ollie Pope a captaincy? <laughs> <laughs> So. I mean, he's got a hundred percent record in, in terms of wins, so yeah, he'll yeah. be, uh, he'll be, yeah. I hope he yeah. just goes down and has a bit of fun, to be honest. And and his vice captain. I do, mm. I do like us talking about the big bash because here in Sydney it is heating up. We've had a couple of yeah. 28, 29 degree days chatting some yep. big bash. It means summer's around yep. the corner. Very excited. That means uh, Vaughny's going to have a bar stool down in Coogee at a certain yeah. little uh, little jacks. Yeah, the little jacks, jacks will be ready. Yeah. Morning. Have, they, have, they, have they had a refurb? Have they refurbed or decorated or done anything? I'll, I'll go check this weekend. I'll go yeah, check. Yeah, just contact. Weekend. Just make sure yeah, we'll, the stool's still there in the corner. Yeah, with Brian uh, and Lara there. Yeah, I'll check that. Mate, yeah. well, um, well, a young fella, and congratulations to Archie V on his first class mm. debut. Um, mm. Wicked in his first over. Uh, some runs. Um, mm. Is he going to spend the off season down in uh, in around Coogee again? Is he? Mm, could be. Now that he's, he's a coming, professional. But I don't know when he's coming now. There might be other things on the horizon. Right. So, okay. um, yeah, he'll he, he he'll make an appearance in Little Jacks at some stage, no no question. He'll, uh, he'll try and get a position it. in the corner, but he won't get that because I'll be there. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, he'll, he'll be in and around Kudge at some stage, I'm pretty sure, at Christmas. Yeah, I was going to mention that was um, for the Toad, bit of a, a fantastic debut. We saw spinning it nicely. The other quick one before the quiz was Farhan Ahmed, who you mentioned last week, Vaughn, on debut, 16 years old, and he's taken a tenfer on his yeah. <laughs> championship debut. Oh, man. <laughs> Pretty good, that. No, he's yeah. good. Yeah. He's good. You're going to see uh, lots of him over the years. Well, yeah. I hate to be the uh, keeper of the time, but we are going long. And uh, I have children to pick up. So uh, let's go. Quiz time. Yeah. It could only be about Joe Root because everything was shared about Joe Root. The records he yeah. broke in that test match with most test centuries for England, most at Lords, most test runs in England, most test runs at Lords, fourth player to get this in both, and first English fielder to take 200 test catches were all oh. records he broke in that one test match. Jeez. So um, I've got a bit about him um, and also... Uh, a bit involving you two for a few questions as well. Um, so, number one is, after the last test, Joe Root averages 67.55 against Sri Lanka, which is his highest against any nation. Who is in second place? The country is his best average. India. In, oh yeah, India. Okay. Both correct. Let's get a number on it for the point. Nearest wins. We're doing his what India. Was he, what was his Sri Lankan? 67, 67 was it? 67.55. 6, 63.44. 63.44 from Vaughan. 65.22. It's a lowly 58.08 point for Vaughan. Mm. There we go. Question maybe number he's not so good in the subcontinent. <laughs> <laughs> Under 60. Maybe, maybe it is Vera. <laughs> <laughs> number two. Gilly had 14 ducks in his test career. Vaughan no. had nine. How many has Joe Root had? Oh, he's played a lot. Ducks, 20. Don't know, 20 uh, 17. 12. Oh, Jesus. Is <laughs> another one for Vaughny there. Well, that's not if you're listening, Gilly is shocked by that. <laughs> no, I reckon someone once told me 
it's about two thirds of your hundreds <laughs> of, of top order players. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's that impressive. Uh, if you got ten tons, maybe six globes or something like that. So he's, some sort of. He's one third. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. like he's, that's good. Twelve in one hundred and forty tests. How yeah. many ducks did How many ducks has Vera had? Um, you keep I'll, going. I'll pull I'll, up. Hang um, on, sorry. I got fourteen. <laughs> yeah, you, <did. laughs> oh, you were coming out to slog it. I'm buying a seven. You were there at the new ball. Oh, yeah, you were the new yeah. ball. The third new ball's dicey. You got to look out for it. It does a bit, especially if it's in England, mate. Yeah. Very dicey. Well, that's... <laughs> there we go. Um, what is higher, Vaughney's Test centuries in England and Gilly's Test centuries in Australia combined, or Joe Roots in England? So you two in your home nations combined. Us, us combined. Yeah, yeah, I reckon it's us combined. You two combined. No. Morning 13, Gilly 7 for 20, Joe Root 21. Oh. Yeah. You asked us that last week. Sorry, guys. Um there you go. So no points there. No points. Still 2-0 to Vaughney. Mm. Joe Root averages below 40 against just one what we call sort of tier one major playing nation. Who's that? Oh, oh hang on. You say they're in the first tier or the second tier? Yeah, which which but, tier? Uh, uh, no, sorry, not of not of Vaughan's new tiering system. No, they're a test playing nation, clearly. Yes, yes. Uh, go <laughs> Zimbabwe. I don't think he's played against them. Hasn't he? Yeah. Ireland. The answer is Bangladesh. Mm. 24.5 is all he has got against them. Yeah. Has he, played, has he played Zim? No. Wow. No, he, he hasn't. No versus them. No, it's just yeah, bank Bangladesh. I have an answer for you on Virat. Mm-hmm. 14 ducks. He's had two more than Joe. Same as Gilly. Yeah. Goodbye. By, by the way, can I just bring to your attention that Virat's played 63, 65, 74 innings fewer than Joe. Mm. Crikey, yep. Joe, Joe just, he didn't get out for naught. So 2-0 two, two still, but um, we'll mm. finish off. What is higher? Gilly's dismissals against England, Vaughan's overs bold in tests in England, or Joe Root's catches in England? <sighs> Test matches. I didn't bowl much. Your mm. ammo overs in tests in England, no, Gilly's no, no, no. dismissals in England, or Joe's Root's catch- catches. I'm going to gamble on my overs then. I might have bowled a few. I think I might have bowled a few against some. G- yeah. Them. Gilly, 96 dismissals against England. Vaughan, 102 overs bowled in Test in England. Joe Root, 116 catches. Good, in good. England for a field. Yeah, board. so. Kept three, trousers three, up, you know? Ding, ding, ding. Congratulations to Vaughan. Another victory for England. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On a getting roll. Getting it done against Sri Lanka, getting it done against Gilly in the mm-hmm. quiz. It's all coming up, England. Um, well, gents, that is the show. Uh, Gilly, oh. it is time for your toast. Oh, yes. I was. Pop the cork off that one. Little Great sound. Cork. Uh, I think it doesn't need any further introduction other than to say root. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Root, yeah, root, root, root. To the root. To the root. Sorry, do you the mean the cricketer? Because you can beat an egg, can't you? Mm. 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 Uh, that's a very good joke. All right, gents, you can find us at Club Prairie Fire everywhere. That's Instagram, uh, TikTok, YouTube. Please like, subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. And we'll be back next week for Season 8, Episode 4. <laughs> Adios. Bye, everybody. Yeah. Adios. Adios. If you liked the video, well, first of all, thanks for watching. But if you liked it, uh, give us a like or hit the button below to subscribe. That'd be great.